Okay, and welcome to today's uh, video. And today uh, I am so glad to be up in the Lake District. It seems like forever since I was up here last. Um, so uh, I finished work not so long ago and decided just to go to a place that I've been before because I know with the, the sun's gonna be going down quite quickly. And I really hadn't really scoped out anywhere where I wanted to go. So we've come up to Tarn Howells. Um, now I did a video from here, oh, must be a year or so ago. And I did most of that over on this sort of kind of peninsula over on this far side here, uh, shooting this way actually. So I'm actually shooting into uh, some of the trees that I picked up in that video last time. But uh, at the moment, my focus is uh, taken up with going right the way over here into the distance um, on that side, which is gonna be, I think, the first shot of the day. But hopefully, if you like to stick around for the next 10 minutes or so, we'll get some more images like this. Well, this is turning out to be quite a nice surprise, actually. Uh, when I started coming up here just after work, um, there was lots and lots of cloud around. And as soon as I started making my way up here, which is about an hour away, uh, so everything went to a nice bright blue sky. And I thought, well, what are we gonna do? Maybe do into a bit of woodland or something, because I thought maybe it was gonna be a little bit too, too light, too bright. But um, yeah, nice surprise that uh, the cloud has started rolling in. Now, we've got an hour or two left of sunshine, and as you can see, the sun is just up there uh, behind me, and it's side lighting lovely, uh, all the uh, scenery around, which is uh, rather quite nice. So what I've done is I've uh, set up the 100 and 400, and for the first shot of the day, I've just picked out a tiny little um, silver birch on the headland there, uh, because right behind it, there is a, uh, a snow-capped mountain. It's just a tiny bit of snow, just, just clipping the top. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for the sun because I think the, the clouds are running over that way. So there's a lot of blue sky over there. So I'm just waiting for the light, just to kiss the snow in the background. So I think I might have to be patient. <laughs> but there's so much to shoot over there, but I've got to be patient there just for the time being, just so that I can get that sort of, that little bright touch or that like bright kiss on the, uh, mountain in the background and hopefully this will be the shot. Well, it's warming up quite nicely at the minute. Now, um, what I've done here is I've got, if I just turn, uh, turn us around, look, you see we've got this wonderful tree and the sun's shining through it uh, from behind. And uh, it doesn't really pick it up on this camera, but uh, we've got a big swathe of blue um, above the tree, but we've also got these wonderful, wonderful um, clouds and stuff all sort of kind of pointing towards it, sort of behind the tree. Now what I've done is I've positioned the camera uh, in such a way that the uh, tree is sticking up into that blue expanse and filling that blue nothingness, um, which uh, looks quite nice. So I've, I've exposed for the sky, uh, which meant everything in the foreground, all the, there's not a huge amount in the foreground, but all this at the front of the tree is all black because uh, obviously there's just too much light getting in uh, from behind. So what I'm doing is I'm going to expose for the foreground as well as. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure it's a term that everybody knows maybe watching this, but there might be one or two that don't know what that actually means, where you feel you can either expose for the sky or you expose for the foreground. 
Now, what I've done is the uh, I've exposed for the sky, so I've got all the detail that I need in the sky, but it's everything's gone into darkness at the front. So we take a, a, an image for that, and then we also take an image by basically, if I just turn you around, <clears throat> so we've already taken an image um, uh, for the for the sky, and I'm not very good at explaining myself on this one. And so now what I've done is I've uh, changed the uh, shutter speed so that uh, the sky gets blown out, but we've got the detail coming in in the shadows just down here, which is what what we want. And so in uh, the, the software uh, Photoshop, we can combine the two and we'll get detail in the shadows and we'll also get detail in the sky. So at least you've got options. I mean, it might work out that a silhouette will look absolutely lovely as is, but uh, you've got to have options. <laughs> Next image, I'm still kind of shooting uh, in the direction of the snow-capped mountain, although that's not actually going to feature in uh, these next couple of shots uh, because I've brought myself down a little bit <clears throat> from kind of up here where this tree was. So I've only just a, just a few meters uh, down uh, and again shooting over towards um, the uh, snow-capped mountains over the far side there. Now we've got a lot of huge shadow going on uh, on the far side there, but you've got all the beautiful um, silver birches just sort of in high relief uh, against them. So as the, the clouds are going across and casting the shadow, I'm just exposing, again, I'm just exposing for the highlights and whatever's in shadow goes to shadow, um, which is just sort of framing the silver birches, just absolutely lovely. As you can probably see, you've got the three um, silver birches there um, quite prominent against the shadows uh, on the horizon or just on the, the, on the ridge there. And um, that is working out just nicely because what I've basically done is uh, I've basically stuck them uh, again. I don't think you can see it too well on here. Let's see if we can brighten that up a little bit. So as you can see on this one, I've just brightened it up um, just so you can see the back of the uh, camera. Uh, he's got the three silver birches just on the headland there uh, being lit up beautifully by the setting sun. And as you can see in the background of that, um, they're thrown into high relief by the shadows in the background. And I like that, the way that uh, kind of sort of sets them uh, into the image. And with them being sort of uh, on a sort of 45 degree angle across the um, image. Uh, I think that looks quite uh, quite nice, I think. Um, but yeah, I'll pop the image up for you now and see what you think. Certainly coming in a little bit, uh, it's coming in a little changeable at the minute. Uh, look over in the distance here, you've got all the low clouds starting to come in. I mean, it was baking hot just now, and uh, now all of a sudden it's gotten very cold. But um, as you can see, more and more cloud is coming in um, over on the far side there. Uh, everything is uh, on this side now, apart from a few hot spots way over in the distance, is getting pretty much covered in shadow. Um, so I'm not quite sure how much longer I'm going to hang around here so much. Um, again, if, once the clouds cover clear just a little bit in the distance, there might be uh, a chance of a really nice sunset. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure, what, I'm going to have to check what time the sun actually does set because but there's a nice gap between the horizon and the sun uh, and the clouds at the moment on the far side, but that might change <laughs> in the next few minutes. But uh, oh, it's just uh, just amazing, just uh, absolutely beautiful here.
these two trees behind here, uh, I did set myself in between them because I wanted to basically uh, frame uh, the mountains in the background and the cloud structures uh, in between them to use them as frames. But where that failed was that the tops of the trees were out of the shot and um, it, it just wasn't balancing properly. It just wasn't happening. Um, so what I've done is I've uh, basically moved myself around a little bit more actually and um, used just one of the trees and kept that on the left hand side of the image. And I've got this little mound which will provide a bit of a framing on the on the right hand side uh, of the image. So yeah. Uh, I might set myself up for doing a couple of panos in a minute, I think, um, because the light is kicking off on that um, snow-capped mountain again over there. So uh, I might, again, I'll keep changing the lenses over. And the trouble is when you change the lenses over so often, you've got the chance of getting particles and stuff in, which I found on my Scotland trip was a bit of a pain in the backside to get rid of. So, um, yes, uh, I'm going to move quite quickly. As you can see, it's still sort of kind of happening over on the far side, maybe. But um, I don't know. We'll see, uh, we'll see how we go. But uh, the time's ticking on. What we've got going on at the moment if you look around all these blues i mean you think that's blue sky but it isn't it's uh, all the beautiful blue clouds and very stormy going on up here look and around here so <clears throat> it's all rather exciting i've got myself set up shooting into the sun because you've got all that lot going on but the horizon is kind of filling up with clouds at the minute so i'm not sure if we're gonna if the clouds are going to get underlit that's what i'm hoping for that once the sun goes down it will under under light the clouds but uh yeah i'm just not sure how that's going to go for a minute but i think whoa uh look at that uh dear me it's incredible uh i think what i'm going to do is uh, change over the lenses at the moment because everything's back backlighting quite nice at the moment i'm going to i'm going to uh, change over to the 24 mil and uh, see if we can get some wide vista shots doesn't look much on this camera the light is kicking off um, I'm doing a number of bracketed shots at the moment so I want to make sure that I get the sunset I'll make sure that I've got enough air uh, for detail in the tree um, although I don't mind the tree being in um, shadow for this one because the sky on the back of the camera is very blue 
Um, it obviously, it looks very light grey on here, but uh, the way I've got the ca this camera set up, um, it's looking rather blue. So uh, that I've got the polarizer on as well, actually, just to uh, maybe give a bit of saturation to the colours and stuff that's going on. So <coughs> I'm just firing off a bundle of shots on this one. But the, the image itself is very red at the bottom of the image and it goes up into all these blues and dark greys. So uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with this one, I think. Quietly confident. Here's the shot. heartbeat gone thank you so much for joining me on this one today if you'd like to leave a like and subscribe and all those good things it really helps the channel out and i look forward to seeing you on the next one bye for now